This is a really simple but effective tip. It allows you to print a document stored in a container field using a script step. You don't have to open it first and then go up to the file menu and choose print. It simply allows you to open it and print it all in one step. It's actually pretty darn easy. Let's show you how to find the example file that comes with this video. What you need to do is go to the databasepros.com website, hit the resources link, type in, in this case, print container, hit the find button, and you'll see that the one I'm using here is called print container, but I actually published it another time called print PDF. It's really the same document, it's the same thing. That shows you how much I like this tip. I haven't used it too many times in client solutions, but I can still remember one way back a while ago where I did put that in there. And it was really a great thing because it saved them a lot of steps. They were often printing these documents, and why not just have FileMaker do it for you? Why, again, open it with export field contents and then have to go to the application that it opened up in, choose print, and then go through that dialog. Just have it print right from here. So you'll have to trust me as this prints, and, it, and I am going to click the button, but you're never going to see the print come out. It's, you're going to maybe possibly hear my printer in the background. But when we click this, the reason I have the window smaller is I want you to see what happens in the background. You see a couple things happen in the background. Now, if your window was bigger, you weren't going to see any of that stuff going on. It wouldn't happen at all. So it's a very simple script, and you can probably hear my printer. It's pretty loud. Now, here's the script itself. Now, the key here is the send event here, but we also need to get that file exported. So the first thing we do, and we've covered this in previous videos in this video series, we need to first get the temporary path. Now, you notice that we have that file colon in front of here. Now, in older versions of FileMaker, you had to do that. You don't have to do that anymore. You can get rid of that. That's all you need to do, just get rid of it. It's in there on that example file just because I published it a while ago, but you don't need that anymore on modern versions of FileMaker. I think ever since maybe four, FileMaker 14 or 15. Maybe even earlier, I just don't have it off the top of my head. But we're sending that file or we're sending a variable to the temporary path which gets deleted each time FileMaker get quit, each time you quit or exit FileMaker. And so I did that so you didn't clutter up the, the hard drive. And then we use the get container attribute to get that file name. Now we didn't really have to do that, but I like to show off this function because sometimes you do want the exact file name. You could have just given it a random file name if you want to, but you wouldn't have known what the type of file was, whether it's PDF or Word or whatever. So this actually is very essential here in this case in that we need to know it because if we're going to export it, we're going to need to have that file type on the end of it so we can properly uh, open it. If you don't, if you just try to use a random number because you don't care what the file name is because nobody will ever see it, then you're going to have a problem because you have no extension on it. So a very simple little function here to get that location of where you want it so that people don't clutter up their hard drive, it gets deleted. And then we export the field contents, simple. We specify the target field right here, that's going to be your container field, and then we specify the output file, which is dollar sign $path. In the previous video, we, che we checked this automatically open file. We don't want to automatically open the file. We simply want to get that file out there on the hard drive so we can send an event to it. So what we send our event to is this. This is the tricky part, but not too tricky. And we'll go from top to bottom. But actually, at the top, it says target application unknown. We don't know the application because we don't know what file is going to get stored inside that container field. If you did, you could specify the application, but there's no need to do that. It will find it all by itself. Then your next step is choose one of these or other. I chose other because we don't want to open the application. That'll fill in that stuff for you. Like if I do this, open application, it'll fill in that stuff for you. If I go to other, you'll notice it doesn't have in. Well, it actually still has it, but it would fill this in with other stuff that we didn't want that was specific to opening the application. So we don't want to open application. We don't want to open document. We don't want do script. We want other. We want to specify AEVT and PDOC. Just have to memorize those. Don't have to understand what it's all about. Just realize it's cross-platform compatible, Macintosh and Windows, so you don't have to worry about this not working cross-platform. It is completely cross-platform with no modifications. You just have to enter it as I'm showing you.
And then in the document choice, and there's a lot of other choices here. I'm not going to go over every choice here. In there, you specify the path to the document, which is that variable. And you don't want any of these options checked. Bring target application to foreground. You don't want that. Nothing else. And that's all you have to do to get that document to print without actually having to open it up and then choose print and navigate through that print dialog. Very nifty little trick. Very easy to implement. You can easily copy and paste it from file to file. No problems there. Once you get it done, you can use it in any solution you want.